This is MX-17 based on Debian 9.3, but with lots of enhancements that make it much easier to use than any Debian. This is not exactly the way it looked when I first installed it. I'm going to go to the welcome screen. And under Tweak, you can see I can switch the panel around. Now I customized these panels the way I wanted them. But if you notice, I can back up the current panel configuration, which I did, and I can also restore the default panel without losing my customized panel configuration. So I click on Restore Default Panel, click on Apply. Wait a minute. And it didn't work, so let me try that again. Still didn't work. This is still not the default. So after several tries, I finally got it to display the default panel. Vertical, you have the whisker menu at the bottom here. You have what's the equivalent of a system tray down here. You have a couple of launchers, files, and Firefox. You have what amounts to a taskbar, but it shows icons instead of text. And this is Simple Screen Recorder, and this is MX Tweak. So I'm going to go back to my panel and I'm going to click on Restore Backup Panel Configuration. Apply. I have the Whisker menu up here and I have the File Manager and Firefox launchers here, which is the way it came. I have the system tray over here, but I added a bottom panel and I have a show desktop icon here. I have simple screen recorder and the taskbar or window buttons and it shows me the text which I prefer. And over here I have the workspace switcher with four workspaces. The workspace switcher in the default panel was very, very tiny and hard to use, and it only had two workspaces by default. When you increased it to four, it was even tinier and harder to use. But this is XFCE, and you can configure it the way you want. Now, the only thing I haven't changed yet is the whisker menu, so I'm going to right-click on the launcher for the whisker menu, and I'm going to left click on properties and under appearance I'm going to uncheck show application descriptions and then I'm going to go to behavior it's got switch categories by hovering already checked I'm going to check position search entry next to panel button and position commands next to search entry and position categories next to panel button. And I'm going to click on close. And now when I left click on the whisker menu, the search bar is up at the top here. The categories are on the left the way they should be in my opinion. And of course, being the whisker menu, you can change the size of it. 
as big as it gets, I still have to scroll down for something with lots of entries like the system category. But I have to scroll down less. I'm not going to go over everything it includes. But I want to mention a few things. It has a Conkey Manager, which allows you to choose between Conkeys. And this is Gotham Rev 1 default Conkey. But it also has a Conkey toggle, so I can toggle this Conkey off. And for some reason, it doesn't come back on again. So I toggled it conky off, but I can't toggle it back on. So I restarted it, and the conky reappeared. I want to also point out that if you switch workspaces, the conky shows up only in the first workspace. Anyway, without getting bogged down in the conky, notice that it has several file managers. Uh, Midnight Commander is one, and there's a Midnight Commander editor. And then there's Thunar, the one that you'll probably use most often. For a text editor, it has something called Featherpad, which is new to me, and this is a cute-based, lightweight text editor. I won't go into games. Under graphics, it has GIMP, and it has LibreOffice Draw. Under Internet, it comes with Firefox and Thunderbird Mail, among other things. I want to mention that uh, Firefox is the latest version, 57 Quantum. Now, under Multimedia, I installed Simple Screen Recorder, but it came with the VLC Media Player and the Pulse Audio Volume Control. Now, MX Tools is quite an extensive category. There's some interesting things here. There's a kernel updater. There's a boot repair. There's a codex installer, which I've already used. There's a menu editor. Now there's the MX package installer, which I'll go into. NVIDIA driver installer, and the quick system information. This quick system information tells you just about everything you'd want to know about your existing system in one window. Gives me the model of my computer, whether I'm in UEFI or legacy mode, I'm in legacy mode. Gives me the battery condition and charge, clock speed, specifications of the central processing unit, the graphics processor, the display server, the resolution of the display, the display renderer, audio controller, I'm not going to go through all of these, but it's quite extensive, even the system temperature all in one location. Quite handy. Under Office, it has LibreOffice. And uh, considering that's based on Debian Stable, you might expect LibreOffice to be rather old. But it's not old at all. It's version 5.4.1.2. It's not quite the very latest, 
but it's very close to it. The reason for that is that in addition to the Debian repositories, MX17 uses some of its own repositories. So some things like LibreOffice are quite up to date. Some things don't necessarily have to be up to date, but I would like a little more to be up to date because the Debian repositories definitely are not. Now it has Synaptic Package Manager, and when I looked for MuseScore in the Synaptic Package Manager, it was an old version. As you can see, it was version 2.0.3, and since I use this application quite often, there are improvements in version 2.1 that I really wanted to have, so I simply downloaded the app image. I have it here under downloads. Now this is version 2.1. Uh, the drill here was app images, if you don't remember is to right-click on the file name, left-click on Properties, and then left-click on Permissions, and check Allow This File to Run as a Program. Now when you double-click on the file, it runs the program. As you can see, it's version 2.1. So basically, I'm able to get anything I want on MX17, not always from the repositories, but with app images and other things like uh, flat packs and snaps. I can generally get whatever I use that's new, and of course there are many things that I use that are not new, so I don't have to worry about those. It works with all of my printers, it works with all of my scanners. Now if I go back here to MX Tools, these are some of the things that were also available in the menus. But one of the things that's somewhat unique is this package installer. It's a simple package installer. And while I generally prefer Synaptic Package Manager, this works quite well for what it includes. There's two choices here, popular applications and full application catalog. So I could install everything from here, but I just use popular applications. Under audio it has Audacity, which I'll probably install. Under browser, notice that it has Firefox, but it also has Google Chrome, the proprietary version of Chrome, as well as the open source version, Chromium. So I'd probably install that too because I like to use Google Chrome when I want to translate websites that aren't in languages that I understand. And I could install the Flash Player if I, did, if I wanted to, or various dockies. I'm not too interested in that right now. If I scroll down here under Screencast, I did install Simple Screen Recorder, which is probably why it's grayed out here. So this is an easy way to install packages if you don't want to use Synaptic Package Manager. There's also a repository manager. It 
Notice there are MX repositories, and this is currently using the one in New Zealand, which is probably not the most responsive one for me. Now I can select the fastest MX repo for me. See what happens when I click on that. But it's still selecting New Zealand. So I'm going to try USA Los Angeles and apply. And it'll take effect the next time sources are updated. Debian repos. It's a little easier to read if I make this larger. And then under individual sources, it has the Antix repositories. So that's the repo manager. In short, it has uh, lots of tools that are designed to make life easier for the user. If you go to settings and then to desktop and then to backgrounds, there's a few here, not a lot, but as with any Linux distribution, you can get other backgrounds from Google Images or from your own photographic collection. And of course, being XFCE, and this is XFCE 12.3, I believe, you have an enormous number of themes you can choose from. Some are new, and some you've probably seen before, but this is Arc Dark, or if I wanted to go to a new mix. Notice on this little cocky here that I'm using 626 megabytes of memory and I have simple screen recorder running and the CPU is running 47, 48%. Before I turned on simple screen recorder, it was using about 380 megabytes at about one or two percent of the CPU capacity. Now the MX-17 developers call this medium weight, and it is medium, but I would say it's closer to the light weights than to the heavy weights, and for me that's good. It's also extremely fast. XFCE is fast enough in Zubuntu, which is the Ubuntu version with XFCE, but it's even faster with Debian, and this version in MX-17 is about the fastest I've seen. It seems to be quite stable. There have been a few little glitches, some of which I've noted, but on the whole it works very well, and I always ask myself, could I use this as my main distribution on my internal drive, and the answer is yes, I could. As a matter of fact, I'm even considering doing it. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.